Hello, this is Killikin, and one of the most tragic and misunderstood chapters of Wild West history is the internment of the Navajo at Bosque Redondo, a.k.a. Fort Sumner. Popular leftist race-baiting revisionism would have you think the camp was built for the express purpose of being the Auschwitz of the Old West, the big bad white man trying to deport undesirable ethnic minorities. That conclusion not only reeks of partisan politics, but it simply isn't true. It was intended by its creator, Regional Governor Major General James Carleton, to be an agricultural education slash training facility for teaching the Navajo and other tribes modern farming methods and technology, which Carleton was fully convinced was the only way the tribes would survive as more white settlers themselves advanced in farming moved westward. The high death toll of the camp was not intentional and resulted from several factors that Carleton, in his hubris, did not consider and had no control over. Starvation was the number one factor. For one thing, there were far more Indians than Carleton intended, on account of his subordinate, Brigadier General Kit Carson, who stubbornly refused to obey Carleton's order that all adult male Navajo were to be shot on sight and not taken captive. Carson, it should be noted, was against both going to war with the Navajo and interring them. He had previously offered Carleton his resignation, which Carleton refused to accept, leaving Carson two choices, imprisonment or obedience. Carson obeyed, but would not slaughter surrendering Navajo. Carson and Carleton both ordered that the Navajo be treated humanely, and while many of Carson's men did obey, letting the Navajo ride in the wagons and even letting the children ride double on their horses, most of Carson's soldiers were untrained, undisciplined militia with old grudges against the Navajo and took swings and shots at the prisoners the first chance they got. Carleton later admitted that he really only intended Bosque Redondo for the Indian children, believing their young minds would be more open to a new lifestyle than their parents. Another factor in the food shortage was the Comanche Indians raiding the wagon trains of food and supplies Carleton had ordered for the Navajo. A Comanche war party even raided the camp itself, prompting Carson and some of his men to go out after them, temporarily leaving the Navajo to the mercy of less sympathetic captors. And the biggest cause of starvation at Fort Sumner was the failure of the crops for three years in a row. First by cornworms, never before seen in that region, then a hailstorm, and then they just wouldn't grow. Plus, alkaline water that made everyone sick and a lack of firewood made the death toll even worse, which caused even more deaths because the Navajo religion was so fearful of dead bodies and the evil spirits they believed haunted them that the moment a family member died, they would all flee the shelter and refuse to go back in from the freezing cold during winter. Granted, once Carleton found out about the food shortage, he used every ounce of authority he had, which was way too much, to gather food for the captives. But sadly, the damage had already been done, and the crops continued to fail. In the summer of 1866, two years into his deadly social experiment, Carleton was transferred to another post. Despite the death and misery he had caused the Navajo, he insisted that it was for their own good and that his program should continue. Kit Carson and Inspecting General William Tecumseh Sherman had other ideas. On June 1, 1868, the Treaty of Bosque Redondo was signed and the Navajo were set free to return to their homeland. Kit Carson died shortly before the treaty, having had nothing good to say about the internment and having convinced Sherman it was a bad idea from the very beginning. To this day, the internment at Basque Redondo stains American and Native American history as badly as the Trail of Tears, Sand Creek, and Wounded Knee. Of the 8,500 Navajos taken captive, about 300 died on the 400-mile walk. In the four years of internment, an estimated 2,380 Navajo died, primarily of starvation, disease, and exposure. Plus, in 1881, Bosque Redondo's death toll was increased by one with the killing of Billy the Kid by Pat Garrett. Kinda makes you wonder if the Navajo were right about the place being cursed. Thanks for watching, everyone. Please like and share. Don't forget to subscribe, and peace out.